Thank you for your attention. I'm afraid that I have too much lectures. So uh, the third lecture, in a sense, is uh, summarize some part of the first lecture in which I tell you about classification of metric spaces and applications. And in the same time, this lecture is uh, close to second lecture about the AF algebra and uh, Bratteli diagram. But in order to make more clear, because I'm not sure that you are close to uh, posing of such a problems, I will uh, f uh, decide, I decide to tell a few words about the uh, topic. Okay, how to... Is it uh, where, where this... I dial all... Okay, maybe it's better to use a computer. Okay, well, I can... Uh, maybe it's uh, more simpler to, uh, to use... Uh, oh, sorry. Mm. Yes, okay. I will use this, and uh, fortunately, it's possible to make uh, accent with green lamp. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, the formal definition of my talk uh, 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 related to the notion of filtration. And let me uh, say a few words about filtration itself. Because, uh, as I know, some of you study non-commutative analysis and so on. And from this point of view, it's very natural to tell about the general stuff. So, roughly speaking, filtration is sequen de decreasing filtration. is sequences of either sigma fields or uh, sub... sub uh, algebras of given algebra. And the best way to join together is the following. Suppose you have some space, x, maybe with measure, but it's not important. You have some sigma field of, say, all Borel sets. And then you consider some sub-sigma fields, and so on. This is called filtration of sigma fields. But in order uh, to be more uh, understandable for functional analysis, instead of this, you can say the following. Let's consider some space of function. For example, L infinity of x. And then, so this is commutative Banach algebra of all measurable functions, bounded measurable functions. Now let's consider algebra which has the same abstract spirit as this, but this is subalgebra of this. What does it mean? It means that you factorize your space over some partitions, and now you consider only functions which are constant on this partition. So this is also L infinity, but not all L infinity, but only those functions which constant on this. And continue this, say, psi 1. And then you uh, continue this process. And so you have uh, some measurable partition uh, which, show, which uh, allow you to consider this space. Then new partition, which is more... Uh, how to say element people in uh, measure theory call that this is more this is greater than this and it means that block of this partition is subset of block of this partition or in another word block of this partition consists with several blocks of here the example the trivial example is the following let's consider 0 1 and then first partition is simply a set of uh, block of first partition is simply a sequence which fixed 
has fixed tail on the first uh, place you have either 0 uh, or uh, uh, 1. Then second partition fixed all past uh, starting from third place and here you have everything and so so this each block becomes more and more wider at infinity you obtain some block which called tail partition and so this is problem for functional analysis look at these sequences of sigma field and say something about its asymptotics why it's important you will see from my talk but my uh, goal uh, is to attempt to classify such a filtration on roughly speaking on two classes and this is close to my talk yesterday uh, yeah, maybe before yesterday uh, uh, standard and non-standard but in order to give you some chance to connect with your um, uh, study I want to say that the same problem appeared in non-commutative analysis you have some sister algebras then you have some uh, commutative or not commutative then you have another and so on for example, in theory of factors, subfactors. Moreover, you can consider non-commutative algebra, but consider the commutative subalgebra inside. And the problem about behavior of this uh, sequence is very important. And non-triviality of this problem uh, sits in the following uh, very important fact. And this is my main uh, in a sense, initial problem. Is it true that if you know this partition for all n, so you know how to classify n part of this sequence for each n, is it true that you can say about whole partition, whole filtration? The answer is not. There is not, it's not true that if you know finite blocks, for each n up to isomorphism, it's not true that you know up to isomorphism whole sequence. And this is my main topic, and let me return to my... Uh, so, I will, try, I will send, uh, tell about the uh, filtration itself, classification, and then some method which I mentioned in my second talk, uh, iteration of metric and so on. And then I consider the uh, uh, so-called uh, connection with Martin Gall approach. Uh, and uh, finally, about the connection with uh, classification of uh, metric measure spaces. Okay, so again, filtration means sequences in my uh, situation of sigma fields but uh, parallel theory this is simply another language sequences of uh, uh, Banach algebra of type L infinity and uh, nothing more uh, for me it's more uh, convenient to use geometrical language namely sigma fields and this partition so we have decreasing sequences of partitions example you have infinite sequences and n partition is just partition which fixed tail and consider arbitrary, arbitrary uh, beginning of these things and uh, moreover uh, I promise to tell you about connection with my previous lecture more geometrical approach is just that Bratteli diagram which I mentioned. In this case, our space is space of all passes, and our partition is nothing more than partition up to beginning of the pass. So n's sub subalgebra is subalgebra of all passes, of all classes of passes. And one class means that you fixed uh, tail and consider arbitrary uh, beginning. So this is a decreasing sequences of partitions which tends to tail 
a partition, a tail a partition which is not measurable. And this is an example of this. More or less, it's a, in a sense, uh, these two languages, three languages, are equivalent. Now, uh, the main classical Uh, sorry. How to put back? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is what I mentioned about partition. So this uh, uh, connection with partition, sigma field is just uh, sigma field of also this zero partitions partition on separate points then you have second partition first partition second and so on there I will consider only discrete partition each block of each partition is discrete set for example dyadic moreover uh, from probability point of view we can consider the situation when you have random process and this process is Markov process and you can see the past sequences of past of, uh, of a given Markov process. <coughs> okay, so maybe this is not so important. Uh, let me continue. Uh, dyadic partitions means that each block of partition Xi n is two to the n points with uniform measure. Uh, so each partition define ergodic or not ergodic er uh, equivalence relation, uh, which I mentioned, tail relation. Two points belong to the same class if there exists such a n that uh, these two points belong to the block of partition Xi n. n could be various different. Now, two filtration are isomorphic. We call, say that they are finitely isomorphic if for each n the fragment of this partition from 0 to n are metrically isomorphic. This uh, notion of finite isomorphism, which means that for each n initial part of this filtration are isomorphic. What does it mean? There exists map which uh, preserve all the structure and put uh, first fragment to the second fragment. Now, uh, the first series, uh, yeah, this is the explanation of the uh, finite, uh, in the finite uh, isomorphism. So we can say that we have uh, in our hands finite isomorphism. Let me give an example of finite isomorphism. Of course, if you have this example, finite, isomor uh, finite invariant of uh, filtration, of course, is the following. How many points in the first uh, block of the first partition, or maybe more, uh, uh, more uh, restrict uh, situation. Suppose you have various blocks, in one case two, three, and so on. In this case, finite invariant is just measure of those blocks which has two uh, uh, points, three points, and so on. Moreover, suppose that Conditional measure is different. So again, you can say how many elements was given conditional measure and so on. So this is how, in a sense, uh, labyrinth of all invariants. All, all of them I called finite invariant. I don't want to tell about the details. Sometimes it's possible, for example, for one partition, it's possible to give complete classification of one partition. Moreover, it's easy to give uh, complete classification of partition, decreasing partition with n points. This is uh, not so important. All this invariant called finite invariant. And crucial question, which I mentioned, is the following. Is it true that if you know all uh, finite invariants, you know all filtration? No, 
And the first uh, counterexample is well-known Kolmogorov zero one law. It's very easy to say that there is a two filtration which are finitely isomorphic, dyadic, for example. But one filtration, if you have independent variables, has trivial intersection, so-called law, zero one law of Kolmogorov, which uh, the, the proof is the following, that uh, there is no uh, any measurable set which is measurable with respect to all finite and invariant. So you can't say that there is a non-trivial event at infinity. What kind of event on infinity? For example, if you have some sequences and you look at the limit, limit, value of limit doesn't depend on change of finitely many of bl blocks, yeah? finite many of coordinates. So this is typical uh, invariant at infinity. And Kolmogorov law claim that there is no uh, such an invariant for given measure. It means that almost all sequences has the same limit. Limit is not different for different, or supremum, or something more, more complicated. So zero one law means that filtration has no uh, non-trivial uh, non uh, uh, events, and which means that intersection of all filtration is trivial. N means sigma field of two elements. All space, uh, sp measure, uh, sp set of measure one and set of uh, measure zero. Of course, uh, this is a class of sets, so we consider any, any measurable set up to measure zero. So you have trivial sigma field, and this kind of uh, filtration called many, many ways, many uh, names, ergodic or Kolmogorovin, or regular, or simply satisfy to law zero one. Why this uh, name? Because it means that at infinity, you have either all space as measurable, uh, uh, which is measurable with respect to, or zero, set of zero, measure zero. And now uh, this is well known, and this is in uh, classical book of Kolmogorov. There are many, other examples of processes, random process, or if you want graphs in which you have this zero one law. It's not trivial to check that given, uh, uh, given process has this property. It's, uh, you, it's take to, uh, it needs to consider some analytic problem and so on. But nevertheless, this is a first, uh, in a sense, uh, 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 dividing of all filtration, filtration on some non-trivial classes. Okay, now the next question is, if you have Kolmogorov law, is it true, sorry, this is maybe too early, is it true, uh, is it true that it, if you have two uh, filtration which is finitely isomorphic, each finite block are the same up to isomorphism, and have trivial intersection, is it true that they are isomorphic? And this is non-trivial fact, no. There is uh, many examples of filtration which are finitely isomorphic, for example, dyadic, and has trivial, uh, uh, intersection, but nevertheless, they have non-trivial behavior at infinity. And my goal in this lecture, and this is my old uh, uh, study, the how to, uh, how to uh, describe asymptotic property of fil filtration. And first part of my talk devoted to question, okay, maybe in general this is not true. But please give me some class of filtration, characterize some filtration which, uh, for which this, our conjecture, is true. So uh, the question is the following. 
to describe a class of filtrations such that, say, S, such that if two filtrations of this class are finitely isomorphic, and has non-trivial, uh, sorry, trivial intersection, Kolmogorov law is 0, 1. This trivial signal. Then they are isomorphic. And I will do this, and this class called standard filtration. So the answer is the following. And this is, will be definition of standard answer. There is such a class which called standard filtration. Class of standard filtrations. So my goal now to describe special condition on filtration such that if you have two filtration which are finitely isomorphic and has trivial intersection, they're isomorphic. Uh, so mm, for this I need uh, to uh, introduce uh, the same procedure. Really, this is the same. It's a uh, part of my talk which co almost coincide with my second talk in which I consider Bratteli diagram and define some metric if you remember uh, some uh, so-called intrinsic metric using Kantarovich uh, uh, method and then define standard graph. Now I want to say more or less the same but not for graph but for filtration in which you fix some measure. In, our, in, in that lecture, I have no measure. I consider so simply graph and define standardness of the graph without any measure. And today we will consider space with measure, filtration. And I want to define some metric and to define notion of standardness. Well. In a sense, I repeat the same which I mentioned uh, two days before. So you have some space, measure metric space. So this is space, this is measure, and this is metric. And then I can define the new metric, namely, let's consider quotient. Uh, 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 excuse, uh, excuse me, I repeat that part of my talk using uh, maybe a little bit uh, another uh, denotation, but I think that it's very uh, natural and very useful. So <coughs> again, we have some space with measure and metric. Suppose this space can be, how to say, uh, 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 there is a filter, uh, not filtration, uh, fibration. It's a, a partition of the Y, which called Xi, such that this is simply Y sub Xi is space of classes of the uh, uh, partition Xi. So the point of I, Y Xi is just class of uh, partition Xi. So it's easy to understand that there is a quotient of measure. It's no, no problem. What about metric? And as I told, uh, there is no way to define metric if you have nothing. So simply <coughs> space with metric, without measure. And if you have some partition uh, in Y, 
it's no way to canonically to define some metric on the classes. But here we have measure. Uh, sorry, uh, well, uh, this is a mistake. Here, mu means nu. And here is nu. There is no mu. You have measure mu, and here, this is uh, my mistake, mu and mu. Now, in order to define this metric, you consider the following. Definition. New metric on this space y xi, I denoted q sub xi, is nothing more than Kantarovich uh, metric between conditional measures on the preimage of x and preimage of y. Well, uh, so uh, 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 in order to uh, explain, x is point of y. Y, small x is point of y. Uh, y, small, is also point of y. We have two conditional measure on the block which uh, contain x and contain y. Uh, again, I want to say that here you, mu I'm, you must understand nu, not mu. And z and u simply element of the subset of uh, y, which is element of partition, uh, Z contain X, Y, U contain Y. And of course, it's clear that if you change X and Y inside of these elements, you didn't change uh, right side. So this is correct definition of the metric. So I want to say that in the, this case, if you have conditional measure, so you have point Z, U, you consider some point X, some point y, look at the conditional measure on this element, and look at the Kantarovich distance. I uh, return, maybe it's written here, in order to remain you again. Mm. Yes, here it is. So the distance between two measures is infimum uh, of the expectation of metric with respect to so-called coupling. All measure on the product of space to itself, square of uh, space, which has given marginal measure, alpha 1, alpha 2. This is Kantarovich definition, and I apply it to this case. So what we have? So we have filtration you have in the space x. Then you have space x1. You have some metric here. Now you can define using this metric here. Then you consider second metric, rho C2. It could be that this is not metric, but semi-metric, and so on. So if you have filtration and have some metric in whole space, you define some sequences of semi-metric on the quotient of this uh, space filtration. Uh, well, uh, by the way, nice, uh, 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 nice methodic uh, to, to look at this. A another way to uh, look at this picture is the following. This is a so-called tree. Uh, if you have partition, first partition, on po pa pair of points, say, dyadic, second partition is partition on, maybe it's right as follow. This is a pair, you know, some subset of previous, and so on. So if you have psi n, so you have, in a sense, three. Dyadic or some uh, uh, more complicated tree. So it's uh, uh, very useful to look at this picture as follow. You have some space, and uh, uh, these points on the space uh, have hierarchy. Hierarchy. The first level of hierarchy, partition of xi n, then second xi 2, and so on. And the problem is uh, about behavior uh, of these trees as uh, partition or trees in measure, uh, measure uh, from point of view of measure theory. Now let me 
finish with this because I want to, ah, this is what I mentioned. So you have the following situation, x with metric, second, third, and so on. So we have sequences of measure metric space. Well, I repeat once more, this is maybe not metric, but semi-metric. What else? Now we can define notion of standardness. We have all preparation. Sorry if it's uh, too complicated, but really it's not complicated. Definition. Filtration is standard if sequences of this metric space goes to one point metric space. It means that for each epsilon, there exists such a n that if you consider the uh, partition xi n, which is uh, makes sense to look at the tree, then you will see the following: almost all blocks, uh, uh, metric, sorry, metric, on the space x xi n. Almost all points where will be, almost all me means all points except a po a set of points of measure less than epsilon are close. Uh, so let's write measure of the blocks of partition xi n such that r n xi less than epsilon is more than 1 minus epsilon. Let me say again. Consider blocks of partition xi n and distance between these blocks. We define such a distance. So you consider pair of uh, blocks. So the, we consider measure mu n uh, mu cross mu n. And look at the, those blocks which are closed this distance between less than epsilon. And this gives you main part of all blocks. Roughly speaking, there exists one block C bar, such that ball, epsilon ball of this block has measure one minus epsilon. So this is written here, many way to define it. Maybe this is most simple. Uh, average of the metric with respect to this measure goes to zero. And this is by definition standardness of the, uh, and this is definition. And now lemma. And this is very important that the answer doesn't depend on choice of metric. You remember that I introduced by hand some metric and whole space. And all my uh, steps uh, use iteration of this metric. By the way, uh, all of this uh, procedure looks like, in sen sense of operator theory, some sequence, some application to uh, initial metric of some nonlinear operator. And so iteration of uh, this uh, nonlinear operator to initial metric must go to zero. And the lem lemma claim that this fact doesn't depend on choice of any, uh, of course, uh, I consider all the metrics which uh, subtract to my definition about admissible metrics. So this metric must be this measure must uh, satisfy to that condition which I mentioned in my first lecture. So roughly speaking, this is a separable metric space with Borel measure. And finally, we have, so this is explanation. So we have two elements. Well, uh, I, I, I think that, uh, well, uh, this is, by the way, uh, I try to explain in terms of trees. It's very convenient to look at the tree because, uh, so in a sense, you, if you have 
uh, quotient Xi n, you can consider some this very nice picture. This is some space, and over uh, each point of this space corresponds to some tree, uh, as I uh, um, understand, and you can define some distance between trees. Uh, distance with tree with measure. Of course, this tree has measure because all this point, this point of the element of Xi n, and there's a conditional measure. So it's an Im important and useful uh, language. But I will, yeah, uh, this is another, well, uh, maybe I will skip this. So using this uh, tree, uh, uh, tree language, language was tree, you can say that the uh, picture uh, similar to uh, uh, some more stronger, uh, stronger claim uh, in the theory of uh, Martin Gale. So uh, maybe I will tell about later if it makes sense, but not now. Main theorem. <coughs> Main theorem just answer on that question. Two finitely isomorphic filtration. Sorry, I <laughs> missed the word standard. Two finitely isomorphic standard <laughs> filtration are isomorphic. And moreover, I forget also. <laughs> <laughs> two words, two finitely is isomorphic ergodic standard filtration, which ergodic means trivial intersection, standard are isomorphic. So it means the following, that uh, in a sense, if you can arbitrary filtration, there exists some quotient of filtration which is standard. So this is also important thing that, of course, standard filtration is very small part of all. But nevertheless, each filtration has his father, standard filtration, which canonically can be defined as a. But more important, the following. <coughs> well, uh, for example, this is my old theorem. Standard dyadic filtration is simply Bernoulli filtration. So dyadic means all uh, uh, Xi n has the same number of points in the block with uniform uh, probability, and namely 2 to the n points. And this is a, uh, one class of finitely isomorphic filtration. So the claim is the following. Each ergodic, ergodic again, I didn't put, ergodic standard filtration uh, is simply Bernoulli filtration, only one. It's a not trivial fact, very old. And so uh, what I want to say that because of this uh, theorem, uh, it means that standardness, in a sense, generalized notion of independence. Because in this case, you have no any notion, uh, you, you forget about uh, even sequences of the uh, random, uh, random sequences, process, nothing. You have only uh, uh, some uh, filtration, dyadic filtration, which is ergodic. It's enough to say that this is filtration which is isomorphic to Bernoulli, uh, Bernoulli filtration, which I mentioned in the beginning. And moreover, the main uh, uh, corollary of this, uh, this is, uh, in a sense, a reformulation of main theorem to uh, there is only one standard ergodic filtration up to finitely isomorphism. So in a sense, it means that you didn't need any other invariant except standardness, uh, sorry, except finite invariant and uh, trivial intersection. That's all. In class of standard filtration, there is only one filtration which has given finite invariant and trivial. In a sense, it's an invitation to classify all filtration. This is the first step 
for standard filtration, we have answer. You have to look at only on finite filtration. And now I consider, uh, yes, let me say about one uh, fact which probably has no uh, very directly, uh, uh, directly uh, connected with standardness, but now that's important to understand. Uh, another property of the filtration is the following. Consider two filtrations. Uh, say, let's say two uh, dyadic filtrations. And then there exist sequences of indices such that if you, so-called telescoping, you omit many, many members of this sequence and consider only subsequence, then they are isomorphic. So it means that if you have even the uh, more general formulation is the following. You have two finitely isomorphic filtration with trivial intersection. They are not isomorphic. They are not standard. But nevertheless, you can find some subsequence such that this uh, uh, rare sequences of the initial filtration is standard. So you can obtain standards that, uh, using the uh, neglecting of many kind of intermediate filtration. So this is called lacu lacunarization theorem. So if you have some lacun, then you can look at any filtration and obtain standard. Now, connection with my talk uh, two days ago. L look at the Bratteli diagram and look at the space of all passes. You remember what does it mean? This space has borel filtration corresponding to levels of the uh, pass. And so you can put the same question. But here you have no any measure. And if you remember, I didn't use measure in my lecture when I consider graphs. And uh, there is a following very nice uh, connection. Let's consider gamma standard, ga graph gamma is standard, if for each central measure, well, central measure, measure which is, inv which is invariant with respect to uh, ch changings of the beginning of the pass. If each standard, with respect to each standard measure, tail filtration is standard. Okay? So this is another definition that I gave you two days before. And so uh, the claim is that that's, this two definition is the same. Let me repeat once more. The first definition, we can graph We define some metric and consider space of the graphs, uh, passes of the graph with uh, iteration metric, semi-metric. And what I told uh, two days before, that there is a limit. There exists some limit of this metric space. And this, in this case, I called the graph is standard. And this is a good case in which this space is nothing more than space of all ergodic measure and so on. Now, new definition. New definition is the following. Again, look at this filtration. But uh, I didn't uh, use this. But uh, suppose you consider any central measure. And this pair is standard in new sense. Well, what does that mean new sense? Uh, really, it's the same as before. I use uh, uh, iteration of the metric, but this iteration uh, fix, uh, is uh, used given measure. But the claim that this is the same. So second definition of standardness is a, of the graph is the following. For each standard, standard measure, uh, central measure, uh, sp space of pass 
passes with this measure is standard in sense of first lecture, uh, lecture today. So these two definitions are the same, equivalent. As I mentioned yes, uh, in uh, that lecture, uh, the many Bratteli diagrams uh, are standard in this sense. And this is uh, non-trivial uh, claim because uh, in order to prove this, you have to calculate this metric. And sometimes it's a, a complicated problem. Let me give you some experiment which I had, uh, uh, how to classify this metric. For example, if you have Pascal graph, so uh, and you consider this initial metric, for example, one here, and look at the, uh, the con uh, consequence of the, this metric. You obtain unit interval. Probably you remember this because unit interval is just set of central measure and usual Euclidean metric. Now, if uh, this is nothing more than Z2 plus, you can consider Pascal graph as uh, quadrant on the, this lattice. Let's consider ZD. So, the, it's for example, for Z3, you have octant and look at the uh, intersection of this octant with lattice and look at the battery diagram uh, corresponding to the le level uh, which, which are uh, plane parallel to the uh, plane orthogonal to the main diagonal. Then it's very interesting the limit space rho rho will be interval uh, simplex, d-dimensional simplex, and metric will be so-called Hone, Hone metric. For example, for dimension three, it will be metric for which unit ball is just hexagonal. And this is not so trivial uh, calculation and unexpected because I didn't know, I hope that it will be Euclidean metric. No. This metric, uh, which I use in this theory, uh, it's indeed very important and probably very deep. I can't, uh, for example, for young graph, I can't, I can't give you precise um, transparent formula for this metric, unfortunately. Nevertheless, for some reason, I know that this is true, that this is standard case, and we know that uh, the set of central measure has some special uh, form and so on. What's an example of the non-standard? Yes, I, I, I mentioned at the end of the lecture yesterday, but now I, I will tell you, of course, uh, I have maybe several minutes and I will just tell about non-standard case. So this is simply uh, uh, pictures. Uh, lacunari theorem. Uh, this is Pascal graph and some. This is Young graph. Uh, and now let me say about non-standard case. Uh, what happened in this case? Well, by definition, it means that sequences of this metric or semi-metric has no limit. So you have very strange situation. You have some space today in my lecture x mu. In lecture two days ago, set of all passes uh, on the graph. And with measure or without measure, doesn't matter. And these uh, sequences of semi-metric has no limit. In, it means that you can't, there is no convergence of this metric. I, I remember that you can consider this metric on the same space. You didn't change space, you didn't change measure. The same is here. 
you have simply sequences of the metric. And it has no limit. So this is non-standard case. It means that we must uh, study asymptotic of metric which has no limit <laughs> in some canonical way. And this is a challenge of the to, to uh, uh, mathematician because really it's uh, indeed very important problem in many areas of uh, uh, things. So uh, standardness in a sense uh, had a light on some part of this problem when you didn't need any additional invariant. But non-standard means that there is some additional invariant and the question in what language you have to express. And this is one of the possible, uh, this is example of non-standard graph. I mentioned, uh, somebody asked me uh, maybe two days before, so this is a graph of unordered pairs. You have two vertices, then on the next level you have all, all vertices of the next level is pair of vertices of previous. Here you have AA, here AB, here AB. Now the next, you have this DD and so on. So each level is nothing more than product of previous level uh, uh, corresponding to uh, factorization of order. You can consider unordered pairs uh, ordered, sorry, ordered pair in which you have even more. This is example of un non-standard graph. And moreover, if you choose very natural, in a sense, Lebesgue measure on this graph. So let's consider uniform measure on this graph. This uniform measure and tail relation gives you example of non-standard filtration. Tail filtration will be non-standard. Another example, very nice example, because this is so-called tower of the measure. You start from interval, then you put old vertices, two, and middle of the edge, uh, third. Next one, all six, three vertices which you have here, and uh, body center of edges of previous level, and so on. And you obtain some very nice uh, limit, projective limit of simplices, and you have everything. You have filtration, uh, uh, you have a notion of equivalence, and again, it will be non-standard. And this example very important because, in a sense, this is universal ex uh, example. In the universal sense that Roughly speaking, each non-standard filtration can be embedded to this one. Very interesting to study this. Uh, I call it tower of measures for some reason, because you can interpret vertices of this uh, simplest as a measure on dyadic uh, rationals of unit interval with dyadic rational value of measure. Nothing more. So this is an uh, object which very close to, uh, say, dyadic number theory, dyadic uh, integers. So you have this uh, structure, of special structure on the uh, space of dyadic numbers. And now I, uh, this is the end of my talk. I tell you one example how to apply idea of first lecture about classification, gromov version classification of measure metric space to this case. This is the following. If you remember, if you have measure metric space, then we correspond to this triple some random matrices. You remember distance matrix, so this is metric on uh, naturals. 
I don't want to repeat once more. So you have uh, independent sequences of the point x, which I ID with respect to this measure, and look at the distance between points uh, inside of this, this uh, sequence. So this is a random matrix because you choose some uh, realization of the Bernoulli scheme. And so you obtain some measure d, uh, which I consider d to, which I called matrix distribution. So this is probability measure on space of mat uh, matrices. And the claim is that this is a complete invariant of metric triple with respect to isometry which preserve the measure. Now we have the following situation. We try to consider not one space with metric, but sequence. If these sequences of metric converge, no problem, you can apply to limit metric these things and you obtain what you want. But here there is no limit metric. And what we have to do? And the answer is the following. What is important that in spite of absence of the limit, it can happen that metric distribution exists. What does it mean? Well, if you remember, uh, what does the metric distribution? You look at the n independent points, look at the matrix n by n, uh, random matrix n by n, then n plus 1, and so on. So you have sequences of the uh, matrix uh, measure on the matrix of rank n. And now it can happen that this is true that if you look at the sequences of Rn and look at the sequences of this measure on the matrix, there exists limit. This limit doesn't correspond to any matrix space. But the question is the following, that set of all matrix distribution is not uh, weakly closed. It means that it's possible to have sequences of the matrix distribution such the limit is not matrix distribution. And this is just that case. So my claim is the following. I have no general theorem, but for some example of non-standard uh, filtration, there exists a metric distribution which is the limit of that. Uh, so this is the, uh, this is simply a repetition of the uh, canonical theorem. Now, so you have this sequence, and the, you define, I call it virtually metric space, or improper uh, virtually metric space. So you have space with measure, but you have no metric. You have something which is sequences of the metric. For example, in some sense, it could be that this is simply a random metric. So you have no distance between two points as number, but as random number. And I just now give you some example, the simplex example of this effect. But nevertheless, sometimes there is a limit uh, uh, metric distribution which is invariant of your filtration. So new invariant of filtration appeared as a matrix distribution of uh, uh, non-existing metric space it's a, as a limit of something. And so this is, a, and this is very m m powerful invariant. I hope very much that in uh, ergodic theory and um, probability theory will play some role. Uh, yes, the conjecture is that this is a general case. So if you have any filtration, I hope that we have this generalization of the metric distribution, but up to now I didn't, uh, I can't prove it. Uh, okay, and this is a picture, uh, in a sense, this is a picture of the falling uh, the close to Martin boundary. Uh, 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 this simplex is simplex of central measure, and situation is the following. Some points are 
maybe not all, but some points gives you some concrete measure, but some points give you some cloud of this type. You have convergence, but know, know the limit. Uh, I promise to give you the simplex example, and it will be the uh, uh, final claim of my talk, okay? It's a very funny example which you can uh, suggest to your students. Look at the Markov chain Xn from n to infinity with the following transition probability. So initial probability of the uh, distribution of X, uh, say, oh, okay, zero. Hope uh, algebras, but I mention only some part of this, which I think uh, more or less in good state, uh, good uh, situation. But nevertheless, a lot of open questions. Thank you very much for invitation and for your attention. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, in all what I told, uh, er ergodicity, it's better to consider ergodic situation. Because uh, uh, existence of, uh, tri of uh, in, uh, intersection doesn't give you, uh, well, in a sense, it's a, uh, the general theory is a direct product of a situation with a trivial and something about the tail. So tail could be, maybe it's not trivial, non-ergodic, then you have some space and uh, you, uh, in a sense, decompose your filtration to the integral of ergodic filtration. For each point at infinity, whether if it's not trivial, some space, you put some point uh, uh, at infinity and then you obtain part of the, your, your filtration, and if you change this uh, limit point, you obtain some direct sum or direct integral. So that's all. So in a sense, the main uh, theoretical problem concerns uh, ergodic case. Well, but uh, I repeat once more that uh, to prove that some filtration is ergodic is highly non-trivial problem. Sometimes we, uh, this is a problem like ergodicity of some transformation. It's not so easy. But uh, theoretically, it's better to consider special ergodic case, and then you can look. But, uh, it is not connected with non-standard. No, 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 of course. M moreover, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Moreover, uh, yeah, uh, of course, in this decomposition, it could be some uh, block of this com decomposition standard, some non standard. So that's a, no, you can look at the option. Yeah? But it looks like in you know, this uh, example, yeah. though there is no pointwise limit in any sense. Sorry? There's no pointwise limit of yes. the metric sequence. Yeah. But there may be some kind of a Cesaro limit. Yes, this is just what I told. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much. This is the right question. Uh, the in standard case, you have metric distribution which gives you immediately. For non-standard case, you have no such a limit, but you have Cesaro. And this uh, result 
is just nothing more than Cesaro. Yeah, so uh, you are quite right. So roughly speaking, the idea about virtually metric space is the following. Instead of sequences of uh, metric, we consider Cesaro uh, limit. And by the way, in this case, we of course has no any uh, 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 you, uh, all points have the same random distance. No, here you have only two points. But in general, uh, this is, uh, it doesn't mean that for some, uh, because your matrix distribution is invariant with respect to some group, then distance between any two points has the same distribution. It's not true that for some distribution you have, say, 0, 1 with probability 1 half and 1 half and for uh, another. No, it's... Uh, and moreover, I want to say that uh, why in this case non-standard uh, is, uh, uh, in a sense, general case. Because convergence is a very rare thing. <laughs> Usually, much more uh, often you obtain non-convergence. But nevertheless, and this is our, how to say, we are lucky that we have for many graphs and many measures, we have standard situation. Yeah? Sorry? Uh, well, uh, I, I told uh, just now that uh, in this case, it's not a random metric space in the sense that uh, the distance is random variables. Because in this case, uh, this random variable is the same for all pairs. Uh, so this is special, very special type of random metric space. If you consider, uh, of course, there is, a, by the way, old papers uh, on this topic. And by the way, I don't know any profit of this idea. You can consider uh, space in which metric take value in some uh, measure space. So it's, it's random. Well, it's possible there are some questions about this. And this is, in a sense, separate. Of course, uh, we can try to classify in the same style as our theorem. But I, not just now, I mean not this situation. So roughly speaking, if you have random in uh, sense in your case, I also interest with the limit. And limit will be a very special random matrix space. Do you also consider increasing filtration? Infinite? Oh, increasing, it's very important. Uh, the, well, I tell you one thing which is maybe important from point of view of operator theory. Uh, in, if you look at the linear, uh, uh, usual operator theory, so in this case, we, uh, what, uh, well, good question. So uh, we can consider theory of filtration with the following. We have Hilbert space and sequences of subspaces. In our case, it's not arbitrary subspace, but L, uh, L infinity or L2 and so on, the special kind. For uh, sequences of the filter, uh, uh, Hilbert space, there is no serious difference between decreasing and increasing. Simply, you look at the orthogonal complement, and uh, uh, in this case, you went from uh, decreasing to increasing and vice versa. For measure theory, it's completely different. Because in my case, this is, for example, L2. But the orthogonal complement to L2 is not L2. And so it's not clear what does it mean. But this is indeed very important difference. The problem of decreasing sequences is much more complicated than problem about increasing. Uh, in the following sense, for measure theory, there is no continuity when you look at the, say, projection. 
uh, well, I, I don't want to give you a concrete example, but this is a point in which many people have mistake. Wiener, Kolmogorov, <laughs> because they, uh, it looks like trivial that if you have filtration and some limit of filtration, then intersection goes to intersection. It's not true. But if you have increasing, this is true. So this is difference between uh, increasing, decreasing in measure theory, in, in, in the positive uh, theory. So, uh, but uh, uh, in order to answer on your question, I want to say that there is another problem. I consider only one-sided filtration. But for many situations, for example, uh, scattering theory and so on, it's more in, even in ergodic theory, it's uh, natural to consider uh, filtration which is infinite in both directions. And uh, again, I want to say that there is no good theory up to now, but nevertheless, the most difficult part is just about that decreasing case. Increasing case is not trivial, of course, but nevertheless, uh, well, how to say, uh, classification of two-sided sequences with respect to one-sided is not so difficult. If you have classification of decreasing, then more or less it's clear how to construct this. And so, but uh, really there is no, uh, 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 for example, even analog of standardness I didn't up to now define. It's, uh, it makes sense to do this. What does it mean standard two-sided filtration? Yeah, but uh, decreasing or increasing is important because if you look, for example, two uh, sigma fields in general uh, situation, it's uh, a very, very arbitrary object and no, no serious things about it. Yeah? Is there some references? Huh? References. Re? References. Ref ah, reference. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I... Uh, no, not here. Well, uh, there are many references. So, the part of this theory about dyadic, it was my thesis many years ago. <laughs> uh, classification of, not classification, but uh, theorem about standard dyadic, that this is Bernoulli. This is in my paper in the 70s, and there is a more or less good survey in 94. I can send you in uh, Leningrad, uh, in, in that time, uh, no, St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg Mathematical Journal, uh, 95. Uh, yes. Uh, then, what I want to say, that after my papers, uh, there are several guys study filtrations from point of view of different, uh, 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 in different areas. There is a very important paper by uh, Cyrilson, uh, uh, Feldman, uh, uh, who else, uh, uh, so four authors, Smorodinsky and uh, Dubins. It's also about 90, uh, 493, in which they uh, consider very interesting problem by, uh, which posed by Mark Yor. Mark Yor has the following problem. You have Brownian motion, and again you can consider filtration of the past, and uh, his question was, is it true that if you uh, introduce some density, so you change you measure space with some density. Is it true that new filtration will be isomorphic to there exists? Uh, and the answer is not. And uh, they use really non-standardness. It's just as the case that you have standard filtration, but if you introduce some density, it becomes not standard. This is, uh, you can find, uh, and uh, Recently, uh, there is a several papers by pupil of uh, Michel Emery, 
from Strasbourg and his, in France, uh, several guys. Well, and I hope that I will write soon some general uh, uh, survey all about this and to, in order to show what the situation uh, just now. Uh, but, uh, well, uh, I think that this interest has a, now it becomes uh, uh, new things which appeared, connection with Bratterly diagram. When I study before, I, I, I study Bratterly diagram, but I have no idea uh, that this is more or less very close topics. And only several, say, two, two years ago, I understand that it's very natural to apply uh, idea of filtration, in, uh, for example, standardness to Bratterly diagram, and vice versa, by the way, because uh, Kantarovich metric appeared in my old paper, uh, but uh, some special questions about uh, 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 graphs uh, gives you new idea for uh, metric theory also. So I hope that it will be some flourish of this area. And there is a, this picture, by the way, uh, uh, corresponds to a c continuous graph. I think nobody consider Bratterly diagram <laughs> with continuous levels uh, because it's not clear what does it mean. But in theory of Markov process, it's very natural because this is simply Markov process uh, whose state space is continuous. And to this you can apply uh, all notion about standards and so on. But I don't know what kind of algebra uh, appeared in this situation. And uh, my impression that nobody considered this. Uh, it must be. Must be some uh, maybe sister algebra and some, something else which corresponds to continuous graph. Of course, there is a, 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 another step when time is continuous. So you have, <laughs> but I hope that it's for next century. <laughs>